Hello, everyone, and welcome to Learn With Me. Today, we're going to look at AP Psychology Topic 1.1 Key Terms. If you haven't watched the 1.1 content video yet, I suggest you do because they do kind of go well together. It's also really good to understand the content that goes with the key terms. So let's get started. I'm just going to go through all of the key terms that um, I found kind of important in this particular unit. I'm going to give you the definition. I'm going to give you a real life example. I'm really just going to be reading the slides for you. You can pause, you can take your notes. Um, I usually recommend to my students to put them on on note cards, those little flippy note cards that, you know, they're tied together with a bound, like a, a spiral rim. Those will really work well because you can keep them all together. So it's really good to have those flashcards. I know it's a little old fashioned and I know a lot of you use Quizlet and all of those things to study. It's also great, but it is really good to actually write them down and have them handy so that you can study on your way to the test or maybe between classes or before an exam or a test, whatever. Um, anyway, that's my suggestion. So we're going to start off with behavior genetics. So what does that mean? What is the definition? Behavior genetics is the study of how genetic and environmental factors influence our behavior. So let's look at an example of that. So one example of behavior genetics is twin studies. So researchers compare the similarities in, be in behavior between identical twins and fraternal twins to understand the influence of genetics and environment on traits like intelligence, personality, and susceptibility to mental disorders. Okay. That's your behavior genetics. The next one is biological psychology. So the definition is biological psychology, which is also known as biopsychology or neuropsychology, is the study of how the brain and nervous system influence behavior, thoughts, and emotions. Okay, let's look at an example now. A biological psychologist might study how neurotransmitters, that's the chemicals in the brain, affect mood and behavior. For example, they might research how low levels of serotonin are linked to depression, leading to the development of medications like SSRIs, selective of serotonin reuptake inhibitors to treat the condition. Next one. Okay, we're going to look at Charles Darwin. He comes up a lot, actually. He comes up in biology. He comes up in, in human geo. He comes up in, in psychology. So important dude, okay? So he, is, uh, he was a 19th century naturalist whose theory of evolution by natural selection explains how species, including humans, adapt and change over time due to variations that enhance survival and reproduction. The whole survival of the fittest, when we think of that, we think of Charles Darwin. Darwin's theory is often discussed in the context of evolutionary psychology which examines how natural selection has shaped behavior. For example, certain human behaviors such as parental care can be understood as adaptive traits that have evolved because they increase the chances of offspring survival, thus passing on genes to future generations. We've done this a lot in biology, I think, as well. Effective psychological environment. The effect of psychological environment refers to the psychological atmosphere or context created by the interactions and relationships within family, a school, or other social settings, which influence an individual's behavior and development. So here's an example. In a supportive family where parents provide encouragement and positive reinforcement, a child is likely to develop higher self-esteem and better social skills. This supportive atmosphere creates an effective psychological environment that promotes healthy emotional and psychological growth. Environment. The definition for environment in terms of AP Psych is refers to all external factors and influences, including physical surroundings, social interactions, and cultural context that affect an individual's development, behavior, and mental processes. So, for example, a child raised in a nurturing home with access to educational resources, a positive social interactions, is likely to develop cognitive and social skills more effectively than a child raised in a, ne in a neglectful or impoverished environment. This demonstrates how the environment influences, influences development and behavior. Epigenetics. Now, if you watch the 1.1, that did come up in one of our key points, and I did say we were going to talk about it a bit later. So the definition of epigenetics is the study of changes in gene expression that do not involve alterations to the DNA sequence itself. These changes can be influenced by environmental factors and can be passed down to future generations. So for example, if identical twins are raised in different environments, one's in a stressful environment and the other's in a nurturing environment, they may exhibit different health outcomes and behaviors due to epigenetic changes. Despite having identical DNA, the different experiences can lead to differences in how their genes are expressed. Epigenetic marks. Epigenetic marks are chemical modifications to DNA. 
or associated proteins that can influence gene activity without changing the DNA sequence. These marks can turn genes on and off and can be influenced by environmental factors. So for example, a person who experiences chronic stress may develop epigenetic marks that alter the expression of genes related to stress response. This can lead to long-term changes in how their body and mind handle stress, potentially increasing the risk of anxiety or depression. Evolutionary psychology. Remember we talked about him before? That was Charles Darwin, right? Evolutionary psychology is the study of how evolutionary principles such as natural selection have shaped human behaviors and mental processes. So an evolutionary psychologist might study why people have a fear of snakes. This fear could be an evolved trait as avoiding snakes would have increased the chances of survival for our ancestors. Extroversion traits. Extroversion refers to a personality trait characterized by an outgoing, sociable, and energetic behavior. Extroverts tend to seek out social simulations, simulation and enjoy being around other people. An example of an extroverted trait is someone who feels energized and enthusiastic in social settings, enjoys meeting new people, tends to be assertive and talkative in group situations. They may thrive in environments where they can interact frequently with others and gain energy from those social interactions. Fraternal dizygotic twins. Fraternal twins, also known as dizygotic twins, are siblings who develop from two separate eggs fertilized by two different sperm cells during the same conception. They are no more genetically similar than any other pair of siblings. Example, an example of fraternal twins would be siblings who are born at the same time but have different genetic compositions, similar to regular siblings. They can be of the same or opposite sexes and may or may not resemble each other closely in appearance or personal traits. Genes. A gene is a segment of DNA that contains the instructions for making a specific protein or RNA molecule. Genes are the fundamental units of heredity and play a, a central role in determining the characteristics of an organism. For example, the gene responsible for eye color in humans is located on chromosome 15. This gene encodes proteins that determine whether an individual will have blue, brown, green, or another color of eyes. Genes not only control physical traits like eye color, but also influence susceptibility to diseases, behavior patterns, and various other biological processes. This will also come up in your AP bio, by the way. Gene expression blockage. Gene expression blockage refers to the process where a gene's expression or the production of its corresponding protein is prevented or inhibited. This can occur through various mechanisms that regulate gene activity without altering the DNA sequence itself. An example is DNA methylation, where methyl groups are added to DNA, often resulting in the silencing of genes by blocking their transcription into mRNA. These processes play crucial roles in controlling gene activity during development, cellular differentiation, and response to environmental cues. This will probably uh, be something you have learned in biology already. And again, if you're taking AP Bio, this might also come up as far as the gene expressions. Genomes. Genomes refer to the complete set of genetic material, or DNA, present in an organism. They contain all the information needed for the development, functioning, and reproduction of that organism. For instance, the human genome consists of approximately 3 billion base pairs of DNA, organized into 23 pairs of chromosomes. It contains all the genes that encode proteins, as well as non-coding regions that regulate gene expression and other genomic elements. The genome determines various traits and characteristics of an individual, ranging from physical features to susceptibility to diseases. And you can see how this is going to have an impact in psychology, right? Heritability. Heritability is a statistical measure that describes the proportion of variation in a trait within a population that is due to genetic differences among individuals. Imagine you have two puppies from the same breed. One puppy grows up to be much bigger than the other. If their parents were also different sizes, we might say that the size is highly heritable in this breed because it's mostly due to their genes, not where they live or what they eat. This example shows how heritability helps us understand why some traits are more similar in families, even if they grow up in different environments. Identical monozygotic twins. Identical monozygotic twins are, 
are, are those are twins who develop from a single fertilized egg that splits into two embryos. They have nearly identical genetic material, making them genetically identical. Consider two siblings who were born on the same day, look similar, very similar, have the same DNA. They are called identical twins because they came from one egg that split into two, so they share nearly all the same genes. IQ correlation. IQ correlation refers to the degree to which individuals' IQ scores are related or covary. It measures how changes in one person's IQ score tend to relate to the change in another person's IQ score. So let's look at this. Let's consider a study involving a large population of students from diverse backgrounds. Researchers find that there is a moderate correlation between the IQ scores of parents and their biological children. This correlation suggests that genetic factors contribute to similarities in intelligence within families. For instance, children of parents with higher IQs tend to have higher IQ scores themselves, on average, compared to children of parents with lower IQ scores. This example demonstrates how IQ correlation is a broader population in a broader population reflects the influence of genetic factors on intelligence across generations. Methyl molecules. Methyl molecules are small chemical groups that it can attach to DNA, affecting how genes are turned on and off. Remember, we talked about this during gene expression. In a study, researchers found that stress during early childhood can lead to increased methylation, methylation of certain genes involved in regulating stress response. This methylation alters how these genes function, potentially influencing an individual's susceptibility to stress-related disorders later in life. This came up when we talked about genes and gene uh, expression blockage. Molecular genetics. Molecular genetics is a field of biology that studies the structure and function of genes at a molecular level, focusing on how genes are organized, replicated, and regulated. Researchers in molecu molecular genetics study specific genes involved in diseases, for example, like cystic fibrosis. By analyzing the molecule structure of these genes and understanding how mutations affect their function, they aim to develop targeted therapies or genetic interventions to treat or prevent the disease. Natural selection. We talked about this earlier when we were talking about Charles Darwin, evolutionary psychology. Those were the terms that kind of go together with this one. Natural selection is the process by which organisms that are better adapted to their environment tend to survive and reproduce more successfully than others, leading to evolutionary changes in populations over generations. For example, in a population of giraffes, individuals with longer necks may be able to reach level leaves higher in the trees for food. Over time, giraffes with longer necks are more likely to survive and reproduce, passing on their genes for longer necks to the next generation. This is an example of natural selection favoring traits that, uh, that confer a survival advantage in the giraffe's environment. When we did this uh, recently in AP Bio, we also looked at uh, elephants and tuskless elephants. Because elephants were being poached for their tusks, you could see that the elephants that had the tuskless gene were actually surviving because they weren't being killed for their tusk and they were passing on those genes. That is natural selection. I'm sure you've done this uh, along the way, either in biology or in, in any science, actually, even in middle school. Nature versus nurture debate. The nature versus nurture debate is a long-standing discussion in psychology and other fields about the relative influence of genetics, nature, versus environment and upbringing, nurture, in shaping human traits and behavior. If you've listened to my video 1.1, we talked a lot about nurture based, uh, uh, nature versus nurture. Consider the development of intelligence. Proponents of the nature side argue that intelligence is largely influenced by genetic factors inherited from parents. Remember, we talked a little bit about that during IQ correlation. In contrast, those on the nurture side suggest that environmental factors such as education, upbringing, and socioeconomic status play a significant role in shaping intellectual abilities. The debate seeks to understand to what extent each factor contributes to human development and behavior. And that's your 1.1 in this unit, right? And this is the key terms that go with it. Thomas Bouchard. Thomas Bouchard was a psychologist known for his research on twins, particularly identical, identical twins that, sorry, identical twins raised apart, which contributed significantly to the nature versus nurture debate in psychology. Bouchard conducted the Minnesota study of twins reared apart, the Mistra. 
where he studied identical twins separated at birth and raised in different environments. His research, his research aimed to determine the relative contributions of genetics and environment to various traits, including intelligence, personality, and behavior. The study found that identical twins raised apart often showed remarkable similarities in traits, suggesting a strong genetic influence on these aspects of human development. Twin and adoption studies. Twin and adoption studies are research methods used in psychology to investigate the relative influences of genetics and environment on traits and behavior. Researchers use twin studies to compare identical, monozygotic, twins who share 100% of their genes with fraternal, dizygotic twins who share approximately 50% of their genes. By studying twins raised in different environments, these studies help distinguish genetic and environmental influences. Adoption studies compare adopted children with their biological and adoptive families to explore how genetic and upbringing shape development. These methods will provide insights into the nature versus nurture debate in psychology. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flash the words. So you're gonna pause and maybe go through your notes or try not to use your notes and tell me what, what is the definition and an example of behavior genetics. A definition and example of biological psychology. A definition and example of who is Charles Darwin. A definition and example of effective psychological environment. A definition and example of environment in terms of psychology. The definition and example of epigenetics. The definition and example of an epigenetic mark. Definition and example of evolutionary psychology. Definition and example of extroversion traits. Definition and example of fraternal dizygotic twins. Definition and example of genes. A definition and example of gene expression blockage. Definition and example of genomes. Definition and example of heritability. Definition and example of monozygotic twins. Definition and example of IQ correlation. Definition and example of methyl molecules. Definition and example of molecular genetics. Definition and example of natural selection. Definition and example of who is Thomas Bouchard. Definition example of nature of the nature versus nurture debate. Definition and example of twin and adoption studies. And that's all for today. So hope you like this. Please remember to like and subscribe to my channel if you like it. I'm going to continue from here. We're going to go into 1.2 of Unit 1 of AP Psychology, and I'm going to do the actual content of the Unit 1.2, as well as the key terms for that unit as well. And please leave a comment if you have any questions. I'm always happy to answer questions. I tutor lots of kids in AP Psychology, and I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, so yeah, please help, uh, please message me if you need any help. Thank you. Bye.